I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is 6 p.m. If you would, please stand with me as Mr. Dayton Williams leads us in the invocation and Dr. Mel Brown in the Pledges of Allegiance. Thank you. If you will, please pause with me for a moment of silence. Thank you. Join with me as we pledge our country's flag and our state's flag. First, our country. I pledge allegiance to the state flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now our state flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one indivisible. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams and Dr. Brown. Mr. President. Item 2A, presentation of score check to Conroe ISD, Dr. Stockton. Ms. Cox, if you'll come to the podium and introduce our presenter tonight. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, I'm pleased to uh, introduce the presentation of the SCORE check uh, tonight. The SCORE program stands for Schools Conserving Resources, and it's a program, a great program sponsored by Entergy. Uh, and tonight, there, it's, it's become an annual affair for us because it it uh, is a program that gives rebates for energy efficient uh, projects that you implement, and we've been quite aggressive in that area. So I'm happy to introduce tonight uh, the presenters of this uh, wonderful check. Philip Lanier, Program Manager, Victor Emmon, Customer Service Manager, Alan East, Director, and Megan Friesa, Energy Program Consultant. I ask them to come forward and make the presentation. Good evening, board. Hi, uh, Philip Lanier, along with Alan, Megan, and, and Victor. We are uh, from Intergy, Texas. Happy to uh, present the uh, school district yet again with another check. As, as, as he mentioned, yeah, this has become an annual thing. Uh, Conroe ISD has been a charter member of the school program for since 2008. And I, I tell you what, you have got a talented crew in, in construction and in your maintenance department that identify projects where the school can save energy. Guess what? That energy also translates to checks that we pay, pay you guys for your energy savings. Um, we have been doing this since 2008, and, and I want to thank uh, Easy Foster, uh, Marshall Schroeder, Roger Garvey for identifying these opportunities and bringing them to us, but also helping, you know, presenting the projects to you guys where y'all can uh, save energy, but as well as earn, earn these cash incentives. What does a kilowatt save mean? Well, you know, there, there's a lot of people have problems understanding, hey, you know, kilowatt, what does that mean? How does that mean for us? Well, based on the projects that this check represents, this is a check for $74,092. The projects that y'all, that Conroe I State did was anywhere from lighting retrofits, air conditioning retrofits, new construction projects, saved a total of about 343 kilowatts, you know. Translate that over to kilowatt hours, that's 877,000 kilowatt hours. What does that mean for a district? Well, in essence, you're gonna save about $80,000 a year just in your electric bill. That sounds crazy, the electric company wants you to save energy in your electric bill, but it's honestly, it's true. We, we love this program, we enjoy y'all being a participant. The green benefits for you guys participating in this program and saving that much energy is the equivalent of removing 130 cars off the road for an entire year. So by doing this project, you reduce energy consumption, which means we don't have to produce as much energy at our plants, which is greenhouse gases, which means we're able to remove cars off the road off the, off the entire year, the equivalent of. Or you could say it's the equivalent of uh, removing 69,000 gallons of gasoline that, uh, that we didn't burn here in our area. So greener air, greener environment, and overall makes, makes, a, makes some wonderful projects for the community itself. I know that, that Roger and, and Marshall and Easy have identified some additional projects the district can do. Um, and some of them are, are replacing the older T12 fluorescent lights. You've been into your summer campuses. I know if y'all walked in and go, wow, look at those ugly lights. 
been in there for 30 years, and you know these are these are great lights to replace. But they're looking at some of the new modern LED technology lights. Which guess what? You install those things, you literally you don't have to touch them for you know eight, ten years. They're up there and they're done. But they also save a lot of energy. So a lot of benefits about that. I know these guys are have identified that based on what they have told me on the lights that y'all have in the district and that, that they want to replace, the check you could receive could easily double. So we're talking $140,000 cash incentive check from Entergy if you should replace those lights. And guess what? You're going to save even more than that on your electric bill. So really good investments. We see those investments not only that you're saving it, but you're now reinvesting those monies back into the classroom instead of paying a, an electric bill. So right. really important. So again, thank you all for being a great partner. Uh, thank you, board, for uh, making a decision on on, uh, on doing these projects. And on behalf of uh, Entergy Texas, we want to thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if we could uh, take a picture, Dr. Stockton and the board, that'd be great. You are going to leave the check, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Item 2B, Patrons Influencing Education Award, Dr. Stockton. I'm very pleased to introduce Carrie Galatis, who's going to introduce our very special recipients. Thank you, Dr. Stockton and members of the board. Every year, our school staff members, in compliance with their legal obligations, make reports of abuse and neglect to the Department of Family and Protective Services, who you know as CPS. This happens all over our state and nation, and in our, country, in our county alone, CPS receives over 4,000 reports of abuse and neglect each year. In our part of the state, CPS is divided into two regions, the Houston region and the outlying county region. The outlying county region is, encompasses 12 counties, one of which is our county, Montgomery County. Of the 428 investigative workers in the 12 county region, 34 of them are assigned to Montgomery County. Once CPS receives a report, it assigns it one of two priority ratings. Priority one reports are those in which it appears the children are in immediate risk of abuse or neglect and death or serious harm could result. These investigations must be initiated within 24 hours of being received. All other reports are considered priority two reports, and these investigations must begin within 72 hours of receipt. Investigation workers frequently find themselves, as you can imagine, in dangerous and very emotionally charged situations. Oftentimes, no one is very happy with the decisions or actions that the investigative workers take. Protecting our state's children can be a thankless job. CISD and its staff values the important job CPS does to keep our kids safe. It is a very difficult for a child who lives in an unsafe environment to learn. We appreciate the protection CPS provides our most vulnerable students, and that is why we would like to award the staff of the Montgomery County CPS Office the Pi Award. To accept the award on behalf of CPS is a person I admire and have known for a very long time. Cindy Umling is the Region 6 Program Director for CPS. She has worked there for over 35 years in a variety of different roles. I consider her my friend and appreciate the help she is always willing to give me in CISD. Cindy and all the staff at CPS truly are patrons influencing education. Thank you for all you do to protect our students.
And on behalf of the board, I'd like to present this plaque to you all that says Montgomery County Ch Children's Protective Services by the CISD Board of Trustees in appreciation for your commitment and dedication to the students of Conroe Independent School District. On behalf of the board, I can't thank you all enough for everything you do for our students at, at you know, the most vulnerable times in their lives. And we appreciate all of the support you give to the students and to our counselors and to everyone within the district. So thank you so much. And I know you have some words you would like to say. We actually get a pie. That's yes, wonderful. Pie. <laughs> and we will. We love food. That's one of the few rewards we get. And we do share that at the office. So thank you. On behalf of Montgomery County CPS, please accept our wonderful thanks for this beautiful award. It's not very often that we do get recognition like this, so we are so appreciative. I did want to bring our staff, some of our staff. Um, as Carrie mentioned, we have 34 caseworkers for this county. I started off in 1980 as being one of three caseworkers here. So as you can see, we've grown tremendously. When I started in 1980, we were the fastest growing county in this nation. And through the years, we've had various names, various titles given to us because of that growth. Um, we're very fortunate. We have great support from our legislative body of representatives, uh, congressmen that have supported us financially so that we can have the kind of support that we need to give safety and, and shelter to children in need. But I also want to thank the not just the board, but the administrations of the different schools in our district. I have been um, a fan of Carrie's, Ms. Galatis. For many years, we've worked together. Uh, we have a lot of um, cooperative relationships within the school district here. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do our jobs like we do. So I wanna thank the school district and the different school settings that we work within. Our job is difficult but without your help, we wouldn't be able to do it as effectively as we do. So thank you for that. Um, the community has to step up to help us. We can't do this job alone, and we wouldn't be able to do it without your help, so thank you. I would like to recognize the staff that I did bring today. They work very hard, they work long hours, and it can be a thankless job, but they do it because it is what they enjoy doing or they wouldn't be here. I have uh, three supervisors with me today. Jennifer Koshin, please raise your hand. <laughs> Ashley Green, first day on the job as a new supervisor. <laughs> Dustin Hill. I have several caseworkers. Jessica Garcia, Candy Audius, Aaron Fincham, Joseph DeGeorge, Megan Baber, Lawan McKinney, Rafael Henry, and a clerical support, Catherine Baylor. Did I get everybody? My eyes aren't so good anymore. I've been here too long. Anyway, thank you very much for your support. Thank you. And the pie. We're going to take a picture of you all. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're perfectly you're fine. fine. You're perfectly fine. You all are the most important yeah. part yeah, of that picture. The shot. We're all right. Yeah, there we go. Now we're going to make a line to go out that way, and we can all show. Kind of like a receiving line. line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like to make this. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
We do appreciate all that you do. Promotion day, Thank you for all those tough, Thank man. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you again. We can tell you that we have a couple cases for you. Bye bye. Thank you. All right. Item 2C, citizens' participation. Ms. Ferris, is anyone registered to address the board? No. No? Okay. If it's okay with the board, I would like to move items 9A and 9B to the next two items. No objections? Okay. Nope. Item 9A, human resources hiring of Anderson Elementary School principal, Dr. Stockton. Okay. Um, You'll decide. <laughs> you still deciding over there? <laughs> time, time, <coughs> time's run out, so I need to make a decision. Right. <laughs> I actually made a decision um, a while back on this. Uh, we're very excited. As you know, we have two new schools in our district starting next year. And uh, to serve as principal of Patterson Elementary School, I'm transferring Gilberto Lozano to be that principal. Uh, Mr. Lozano is a seasoned principal and did a great job opening that school. So to recommend uh, the, the uh, 9A is the recommendation of the Anderson Elementary School principal. I'm very excited to uh, recommend one of our sitting, sitting assistant principals right now, Viviana Harris, and she is my recommendation. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion, comments? All in favor? And it passes unanimously. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> President Sander, uh, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Stockton, thank you for this opportunity to become the next principal of Anderson Elementary School, a school that has, high, has a rich heritage of academic excellence and high achievement. I am so honored to be selected for this position. I have been associated with Conroe Independent School District for most of my life um, <laughs> as a student, a parent, and an educator, and I am a proud graduate of CISD. I would like to extend a very special thank you to Dr. Gibson and Ms. Debbie Johnson for their leadership and guidance. I would also like to thank my amazing husband, Ted Harris, my children, uh, Brayden, Brianna, and Teddy, and uh, my family, my mom, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law that are all here, my sister-in-law, and my niece, for Which always one? being there. Let them stand up. <laughs> sure. yeah, let us see who they are. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Here we go. All right. <laughs> for always being there for me. I look forward to working with a truly outstanding group of faculty and students, and I am thrilled to become part of the Anderson Elementary community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, next item will be item 9B, hiring of Rice Elementary School Principal, Dr. Stockton. Okay, as you know, we're, we're opening two new schools, and the second uh, <laughs> new school we're opening is, is uh, Stewart, I have to confuse her just a moment, Stewart Elementary School. Um, and I'm very excited to transfer Carrie Fitzpatrick, the current principal at Rice, to be the 
new principal at the new school, Stewart Elementary School. In fact, uh, Mrs. Fitzpatrick is here. Please stand up, wave to the crowd. We're very excited about that. And uh, also very excited about the recommendation uh, to actually move her assistant principal at Rice to the principal position, and that is Melinda Stewart. And I make that recommendation. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion or comments? All in favor? And it passes unanimously. Unanimously. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. President Sanders, the Board of Trustees, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to serve as B.B. Rice Elementary Principal. Um, I've truly enjoyed my time there and I'm excited to continue the legacy that so many before me have already imparted into that campus. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Hines and um, Dr. Stockton and Dr. Hines for their leadership and vision for CISD because without you, we don't have a map and we don't have a road to follow, so thank you. I'd like to thank Dr. Gibson for taking the time to listen and to guide me. She's always been there as um, someone to come and talk to, so I appreciate her. I'd like to thank Carrie Fitzpatrick for mentoring me and always modeling excellent leadership. I have a great role model to follow and someone who's laid the path for me, so I'm very appreciative of her. I'd like to introduce and recognize my family, um, who are my support system. My husband, Thomas, who never tires of hearing how my day goes. <laughs> my son, Cohen, who's a future BB Rice raccoon. He's sleeping right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, my parents, Tim and Sharon Walsh, who raised me to love teaching as much as they have. My sister, Kelly Locke, and her husband, Brandon, and my niece, Kerrigan. My brother and his wife, Stephanie, Christian and Stephanie. Um, and then my nieces, Lydia and Avery. So, and then the many friends. So thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and if it pleases the board, I'd like to also move item 4C up. Excuse me, Mr. President. There is a reason that we move those board meeting uh, those those uh, those motions up forward. That's so that y'all could leave if you wanted to. Yeah. You're certainly <laughs> welcome. <laughs> But but uh, with all the young ones, uh, it might be time to go home. <laughs> all right, item 4C is math, science, technology, application, adoption for grades K through 12. Dr. Stockton. Okay, uh, Dr. Gibson, if you'll come up and present that item along with Dr. Null. Good evening, President Sanders, board members, and Dr. Stockton. Before I begin, I'd like to recognize our CNI staff and the textbook committee members for the tremendous amount of work that has gone into this process. So as I call your name, if you would please stand. Uh, the first one is Mrs. Edith Upshaw, and she could not be with us tonight because she's working on her doctorate and she's at class uh, for her leadership in this process. Mrs. Cheryl Heim, the coordinator of science. Mrs. Holly Berger, the coordinator of mathematics. Uh, Mrs. Tammy Zunker, elementary mathematics specialist. Mr. Jared Lambert, Coordinator of Instructional Technology. Mr. William Kelly, Coordinator of Assessment and Evaluation, and he's at an assessment conference in Austin. Mm -hmm. And of course, our very own Dr. Hines, at, uh, Dr. Hines, as well as the textbook so selection mm -hmm. committee members. Please stand, anyone that may be here. Thank you. This textbook committee has completed its year-long review of those textbooks designated by the Texas Education a Agency in Proclamation 2014 for adoption and use in, this, in our school districts. Proclamation 2014 provides for the, the, uh, the adoption of mathematics, science, and technology um, and materials for grades K through 12. 
The materials have been on display at the textbook warehouse for public view, and a community meeting was hosted on January 17th, 2014. Teachers and patrons have, have submitted evaluation and comments to the committee for consideration and recommendations. The textbook committee met on February 6th and 7th and voted to recommend the following <laughs> list of books to the board for ordering. Tonight, we are asking for your approval for the textbook selection committee choices. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or comments? If not, all those in favor? And all opposed, it passes unanimously. Thank you, thank you for your hard work. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you it. No. Thank you. And thank you for showing up tonight. That was moved uh, ahead in the agenda, so you could leave. If you <laughs> so, uh, please feel free to do so. And thank you for your service to the textbook Absolutely. committee. We appreciate that. We know this is exciting stuff. <laughs> All right, now we're back on to the consent agenda, item number three. The board has had the motion items. Second. Motion and a second to approve. Is there any discussion or comment? If not, all those in favor? And all those opposed, and it passes unanimously. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Item 4A, curriculum and instruction, 2014-2015 calendar approval. Dr. Stock. Dr. Hines, if you'll come and present that item. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Stockton. Uh, this evening, um, I bring to you uh, for your approval the recommendation for the 2014 and 2015 school calendar. The draft calendar has been posted on the CISD website and has been provided to campuses to share with their staff and community. The District Level Planning and Decision Making Committee has studied the comments and the suggestions that we receive from staff members, from parents and community. Um, and after reviewing it at last month's meeting, um, that committee voted to bring forward this uh, calendar uh, for, your, for your approval, and this is what they recommend. The highlights include, uh, as we have, it's very similar to this year's calendar, basically. It's, it's a lot like this year's calendar. The first day of school cannot be before August the 25th. Uh, there's uh, one week off for the Thanksgiving week, which is just, uh, November 24th through the 28th. Uh, December 19th will end the first semester, uh, and the, uh, the winter break is begins December the 22nd and goes through uh, the 5th, uh, which comes back as a work day and begins the second semester. There's, uh, again, going to be 79 days in the first semester and 99 in the second semester. There's 178 total school days and 187 total staff days. And so um, this is the recommendation brought so forward. Moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or comments? Not all those in favor? All those opposed, it passes unanimously. And by the way, we're not planning on using any employment water days next year. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, our, that's our plan every year, by the way. Fresh out. <laughs> All right. Item 4B, graduation plans for students entering ninth grade in the fall of 2014. Dr. Dr. Hines, Dr. Null to come present that item. That new temple is here. Mm -hmm. Good evening. President Sanders, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Stockton. Uh, tonight, uh, Dr. Null and myself will present, and actually mostly will be Dr. Null, uh, some information regarding the graduation plans for students that will be entering the ninth grade this fall. And uh, it, as you may be, it's, there's certainly been a lot of discussion in the news. Uh, we'll, there's a lot of information tonight, and certainly uh, we'll try to, to, to go through it at a fairly quick pace and we apologize for that but there's a lot of information we will share uh, regarding we'll start off with a little bit of background about our current graduation plans we'll look at uh, what we think drove a lot of the changes uh, just a quick overview of the house bill 5 and the new state graduation plans as well as uh, what we're doing in Connor Independent School District and our proposed plans and then then just kind of wrap it up so that's what we hope to kind of get through that at a quick pace. 
I'd like to start off by just kind of setting the table of where are we right now, because I think uh, I don't want to uh, make that assumption that you stay up late at night reading the course of studies. Um, there's a lot to keep up with, but this is what we currently do. Um, currently, there are three plans that are in place, and these three plans are going to stay through the students that are currently in high school, although they'll have the option of graduating on the foundation program. Uh, but these three plans are going to stay to, to, to work their way out. Um, so our current ninth graders will graduate under one of these. The, uh, the CISD minimum plan is a plan that we don't advertise because it's not in the state of Texas wants us to use the recommended plan and so it requires parent permission to graduate under that plan but the recommended plan as you can see is what we call the four by four and the distinguished achievement program is the four by four and then you can see the other requirements PE is one credit you some of you were on the board a few years ago when we changed that from 1.5 credits to one credit now when the state no longer required uh, all the more than 1.5 or more than one credit of PE. We also had the option back then of whether we wanted to keep health as a requirement, and we chose at the recommendation of our SHAC committee to keep health in the core curriculum. And LOTE stands for languages other than English or foreign languages. And we have speech, fine arts, and then there's different versions of electives. And that's basically, these are the plans that are in place right now. Uh, trying to get, you know, in, in 2007 and 2008, House Bill 3 was the bill that brought in the 4x4 plan. And up until then, those plans really were pretty much the same, except under math and science, there were only three credit requirements. Algebra 2 was still a requirement, but it only had the requirement of 3 and 3 in math and science. And the total of the recommended and the and the was 24 and the distinguished was 25 because it had the three credits of foreign language as opposed to two. Now we've always required, or at least since I've been here, a fourth year of social studies. So just to kind of give you a background as a district, that's always been in our district's minimum plan, which is one state elective above. In the prior minimum plan, the state always said you can pick one, either pick social studies or science, we just picked fourth year of social studies, and that's been a part of uh, CISD's minimum plan. And in many ways, House Bill 5, which just recently came into play, is a response to those 26 credit plans. When the 26 credit plans and the 4x4 came out, we heard a lot of, of feedback from districts back to the state saying, you know, you've taken away a lot of my flexibility that we had under the previous plans. And, and depending on the type of schedule the school ran, and, there are other factors that get into it, but that was some of what I think drove a lot of the discussion that came back in the most recent legislation and why there were changes made. So I just wanted to kind of set the table a little bit about where we are, where we were, and uh, Dr. Noel will, um, will in a moment kind of take you to where we think we're going, but certainly you will decide that ultimately. Um, I'll remind District Goal 1, and this is the first bullet, CISD will maintain rigorous standards of achievement to prepare all students for graduation and post-secondary success. And we certainly take that goal very seriously uh, in terms of our obligation to prepare our students for whatever they do next, whether it's to go to college, to the workforce, to the military, to technical training, we want to prepare them. And so we, we, we take that very seriously. We also um, view our graduation plans as a need to be balanced so that we maintain high expectations that we currently have. And we want to maintain that rigor for our students. Uh, but at the same time, we see some opportunity to take advantage of the flexibility that the new plans afford that can allow our students to prepare for post-secondary success. So we think we're trying to hold on to those two ideals. We want to keep the rigor in place. We want to have high expectations. We want our students to be successful. We also want to take advantage of some of the flexibility that maybe a few students didn't have under the prior situation. The trade-off is there's a whole bunch of plans and it's very complicated. So that's the negative side of it. Uh, and so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Noel and he'll take you through the hard part. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hines. Appreciate that. Uh, my goal here to, in this presentation, I'm going to start with the, the state plans 
can be very broad and as it relates to the entire state, then I will get us into specifically what we plan to do in Conroe ISD with your approval. So if, if you'll you know, allow me to be a little broad and then we'll, we'll narrow our focus as we move forward. Uh, House Bill 5 was a, a, a very uh, far-reaching bill as far as schools related. We're going to focus today on what does it mean to graduation plans and our students. Um, just uh, two weeks ago, the State Board of Education actually adopted the rules associated with House Bill 5. Uh, TEA is now working on their correspondence to the districts and eventually that will filter its way to TASB and there'll be board policy coming to you in the future uh, relating to what we're talking about tonight. As Dr. Hines said, the, you know, we feel like the purpose of these changes were to give students more flexibility and, and allow them to seek out the opportunities in their areas of, of specific interests. Um, we feel like the plans that we have in place tonight are going to allow them to do that. In general terms, this is the new plans. These are the new plans. We have the foundation high school program, which is the basic curriculum. Uh, beyond that, you can have the foundation high school program with an endorsement. Maybe the easiest way to think of that, it's almost like choosing a college major. It allows them to pick a path beyond just the basic curriculum and follow that path, and I'll, and I'll discuss those paths with you. We have a distinguished level of achievement, which uh, if they've taken a certain amount of coursework, they can become a distinguished graduate, and then performance acknowledgments, which I'll describe for you as well. All right. Yeah, exactly. Everybody <laughs> lean forward to take a look at this one. I'm not going to leave this up here very long. And I show you this maybe just for, to uh, allow you to appreciate the work that our fantastic counselors do and will continue to do. These, what, what you see here, represent all the graduation plans that will be in place for the next three years in Conroe ISD. You have the first three columns are, are those columns that Dr. Hines already showed you, right? the current graduation plans. Uh, and then the next three are the new plans that are coming on board. We will have students in the class of 2014 graduate on the foundation plan, which is one of the new plans in addition to all the old plans, and, and the same will be the case for the next few years. It is the incoming freshman class of 2018 that will be uh, exclusively on the new plans. Okay. The three to the farthest, farthest to the right, correct? The new yes, plan. correct. And and I'm, the next slide here, right. this is a blow up of those three. Thank okay. You. Now we can see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I understand that. So when you look at the three plans, once again, this is this is directly uh, from the state plans, not what we're proposing uh, for your approval in Conroe ISD, but just so that you've seen them. The foundation high school program uh, mirrors our minimum pro program that we had previously in the old plans, okay, at 22 credits. Um, one of the big changes that I would just have you take note of is in the old minimum plan, there was no foreign language component. In this foundation's high school program, there is a two-year foreign language component. Uh, and so that is, a, that is going to be a change for our campuses. There's a new course that we'll talk about in the future that is going to help us with that. But as you progress over, you see the foundation high school program plus endorsements. We talk about those endorsements as being career paths. Um, and they are STEM, business and industry, public service, arts and humanity, and multidisciplinary. And uh, I'll describe those for you a little more here in just a moment. And the far right is the foundations program plus distinguished level of achievement. Uh, so that's a step beyond, and I'll, I have a slide that will show you exactly what that means. But there's a lot of information here, but we're going to break it down. When we talk about the endorsements, here they are. There are five. A student may earn more than one. They may earn all five. That's quite possible. When you look at the first one is STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, that's the broad scope. And then beyond that, you have more specific pathways under each endorsement. It may not be that we offer each of these path pathways. Okay, Once again, this is the state. But under STEM, you see environmental science, technology, engineering, and advanced math, business and industry, database management, information technology, communications, accounting, finance, marketing, graphic design, architecture, construction, welding, HVAC, logistics, automotive technology, and agriculture science, public services, health services, education, training, law enforcement, culinary arts and hospitality, arts and humanities, or political science, world languages, cultural studies, 
English literature, history, and fine arts. And then that last one is the multidisciplinary studies. And this will allow students to combine select courses from many of the endorsement areas uh, to combine uh, under one umbrella. So it's not uh, one of the questions I had earlier, is that kind of like doing you know, general studies in college or you know, can, we can never get a job? That's not what this is, okay? This is, this is most likely for our students that are seeking multiple course AP level courses in a lot of different areas. Uh, they will be able to pull them under this umbrella and have a multidisciplinary studies uh, endorsement on their diploma. Dr. No, can I ask you a question Certainly. about that slide? So if I'm wanting to be endorsed in just pick two, I may take one class on environmental science and I can get the STEM endorsement? Or are you saying I have to take all four of those classes? There, there are set endorsement. courses that you would go through. So okay. Let's, that's, uh, that's what I was under each one of the subheadings? Correct. So, okay. for example, I, and just since, you, since you mentioned STEM, I'll give you an example of the options of how you would get a STEM endorsement. Uh, option number one is you meet the general requirements uh, of the foundation pro program, plus you have four courses in math, three of which had Algebra two as a prereq. Okay. Uh, and then option two would be meet the requirements, four years of science that include physics. Uh, option three would be uh, complete CTE courses that are in a coherent sequence of three or more credits in the health science area. So each of these the singular bullets you see there have this many options. That's what we said. It's okay. a, it can be a little complicated. So our counselors will, are going to, they will do a great job of managing this. Now the distinguished level of achievement, we said you have the foundation program, you have endorsements. The next step is the uh, distinguished level of achievement. So to earn this, you must have a found, must be on the foundations program and earn an endorsement. You must also take Algebra two. I know if you you've seen a lot of conversation and discussion about Algebra two, uh, it is no longer required by the state. We still believe very heavily that in order to be prepared uh, and uh, a viable candidate to be accepted into a university, you're going to need Algebra two. Uh, you exactly. You must have, uh, you must be distinguished level of achievement in order to uh, meet the requirements of that top 10% automatic enrollment into a state university. Yes, ma'am. Two slides back where you showed all of the programs. Yes, ma'am. Why are the first two not eligible to be in the top 10%? The, the rules that the state created, that they, they wanted to force you to be uh, distinguished so that the Key factors there, you need Algebra 2. You can you can have an endorsement without taking Algebra 2. Because you're saying that they're eligible for admission to a university. They are. A lot of one of the criteria for the universities to get scholarships, etc., is to be in the top 10%. True. But you're taking those kids out of the pool to begin with. They are, but we're not, as you will see. Okay. Uh, I right. agree with you. The uh, Under the old minimum plan that we currently have, Students are not eligible to go to a four-year university upon graduation. Under this new, the top 10%. right, which is yeah. two separate worlds. Right. But under this foundation high school program, they are eligible to go. Will they truly gain acceptance? I don't believe so. Or be prepared. Or be prepared when they get there. So in order to make them better candidates, we understand that we have to go. So you're trying to drive the population to a certain curriculum, or the state is. Mm -hmm. I don't think it level. They're right. taking a step to allow more flexibility is what they're allowing. What we have looked at is we understand we want our students to be prepared for post-secondary success. We're not going to take that step as far back as what the state would. Sherry Sunderman. There's a couple of people here that, and I think Ms. Sunderman, if it's okay, Sherry Sunderman is our coordinator of guidance and counseling. And then also we have Mr. Greg Ship, our coordinator of career and technology education here this evening. But I know Ms. Sunderman wanted to yes. jump in on that answer, too. Yeah. You know, they can change it. Actually, what they're saying here for to be eligible for the top 10 percent is the same thing that they have to be eligible for the top 10 percent now. Mm -hmm. It's the recommended plan that they have now. Okay. Yep. So it's actually the same thing. Well, same. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they can change that, it. We haven't really changed that. They, go ahead. I was just going to say, so a student that's pursuing um, HVAC or welding or one of those programs, Basically, we're taking them out of being in the top 10%. No? Yes? 
No. No. They, he, they can, can, he can be distinguished and pursue that. Co correct. Okay. And, and they could they would still be a grad they could still graduate in the top ten you know, they can not change seek the they, not meet the eligibility standard for automatic enrollment. Okay. But we have pathways that will allow you to still pursue HVAC or whatever it may be right. and meet these criteria. I think your point is for that is kind of just set the bar at a certain level and keep everyone you know, it's, yes, sir. Yes, if someone wants to take lesser advanced classes, if you will, get in that top 10% round. Well, you know, they can change this all day long, but basically, those universities aren't changing anything. And if our, if our, if our school district doesn't prepare our kids to be successful at college, they're not going to be. I don't care what they claim that they got here. And I'm okay. not necessarily and, and just saying for college admissions. Well, I do know students in high school that being in the top 10%, whether they're going off to college or not, is the recognition that they would like to have and sometimes a perception of students that are pursuing technological degrees or certifications don't perceive the equal value that they're getting or affirmation. And so I want to make sure that we don't take that affirmation that their pathway is just as important because I can tell you, if you need your air conditioner fixed, you want them to, right. we want those HVAC certifications. So I don't want to put a diminished value on that pathway that they're choosing. Not, not at all. It will not change how we recognize our top 10% okay. of our graduates. I just want to make sure that that, that comes out clear. Yes, in but I've heard Dr. Stockton say it a thousand times, have, you know, to a little boy who wants to be a professional athlete, have a backup plan. Right. Well, if you want to pursue a career and get, you know, six figures in welding, that's fine. But it does not mean that you can't have a backup plan mm -hmm. with a four-year degree and, and, and have another degree, you know, career possibility because you might need it or want it. I appreciate the clarification. But, I just yes, want to make sure that we're sending the message across that all of those occupations and all of those curriculum paths are important. Right. Good point. Yes, ma'am. That is. Good point. Okay. Um, and then that next step <coughs> we talked about beyond distinguished is performance acknowledgements. Now, this won't take effect until this incoming class of freshmen and class of 2018 becomes seniors. So this is a, a, a little less clear at this point, uh, but they can receive per performance acknowledgments in dual, for their performance in dual credit courses uh, in bilingualism or biliteracy, performance on AP tests, uh, on the PSAT, SAT, or ACT, or for earning nationally or internationally recognized business or industry certifications or licensure. So uh, once again, this is something that will Come a little more clear as we move forward. Uh, as we talked about, there are there are three new courses that will be uh, generated based on House Bill Five. Two of them are college prep courses. There's an English Four and a Mathematics College Prep course. Uh, these are being developed right now by our curriculum coordinators alongside with Lone Star College. Upon completion, uh, students that have taken these courses will be considered college ready. Uh, currently, students can become college ready based on their STAR scores, their SAT scores, ACT scores. Those students that have not reached that level on those tests could take these courses. Once they've passed them, they're considered college ready by Lone Star College. They, they're not asked to take the TSI test or won't be asked to go to any remedial courses. They'll be you know, initially uh, accepted into uh, the standard curriculum. And then the third course is a special topics in language and culture course, which is uh, that piece that's important to note as we've added the two years of foreign language, what this course allows is once a student has taken a first year of a foreign language, uh, if it's determined that they would not be successful in the second year, they may choose this path, uh, which is more of a survey of, of cultures, and that, that's how they can achieve their second year of foreign language. All right, now we're going to get a little more specific into where we are and, and who we are, what, we're, what our plan is. Uh, there's been a lot of work going on, and, and I, at this point, I'd like to point out the work that Dr. Hines and Sherry Sunderman have done uh, in leading this group. It's been amazing. Uh, we have met with principals, counselors, CNI staff, our SHAC committee uh, to, to discuss where we're heading. Currently, our campuses are working on sequencing. As you can see through all these endorsements, there's going to be some work done to make sure we're offering the right courses. All of our campuses are currently doing that. Uh, and these freshmen, these incoming freshmen, current eighth graders, are already in the course registration process for next year. So we're, we're already, we had to uh, begin this process already. And I'm pleased to tell you that all five of our comprehensive high schools 
have verified paths to each endorsement. So we're very well prepared uh, with, our, with our curriculum to serve our students. We'll spend a little time here, and you can take a look at this and see the proposed graduation plans. And it starts on the left with the Texas Foundation Plan, which we've seen now on a few slides. Um, when you move to the center uh, column there, you see Conroe ISD Foundation. This represents what we have normally done uh, in addition to a Texas minimum plan. We add a fourth year of social studies, uh, a half credit of health, and that's important to us. Uh, we added that last time, it was not required, but we've kept that in our curriculum, and that's important for a lot of reasons. There are, are many mandates that come from the state they want us to do with students. One example would be dating violence training. We do that through health courses, so if we didn't have health, we'd have to find other means to make those things happen. Uh, and then five and a half elective credits for 24 total credits, which is, you know, matches our current plan. And then we have the Conroe ISD recommended plan all the way on the right, which you will see brings in a fourth year of mathematics, a fourth year of science, and bumps up to 26 total credits. And that looks very much like our current recommended plan. We are also, under our recommended plan, we'll require um, at least one endorsement uh, from our students. So here's just a picture, just to try to help get some clarity and, and make, uh, give you an opportunity to see what we expect of our students. If you start at the bottom, you'll see the Texas Foundation Plan. That's the basic plan. Uh, it will be very rare that we would utilize this plan. It's a 22 credit plan. Um, we would expect 1% or less of our graduates to fall in this plan. This is kind of that emergency plan when it's needed. Uh, the Conroe ISD Foundations Plan, uh, this allows campuses some discretion to, to guide kids where they will. Um, we expect 10% of our total graduates to be on this plan. Currently, 89% of our graduates graduate on our recommended plan, which is the 4x4, Algebra 2. We're not going to, we don't recommend that we change that standard. Okay. Um, yeah, and but to be fair about that, isn't that because it's required the four by four? I mean, for all intents and purposes, that's the hard part of the, of the, of the coursework, right? Sure. So, I mean, do you do you see that eighty nine fall? I mean, obviously you don't if you it, say ten percent, but it, it may fall a few points. But what our goal is going to be to maintain our standards where they are. It, our default plan is going to be above that. We will give our campuses the flexibility as they're working with individual students if they have a path. Yeah. And the key to that is if they have a path. We don't want to have students wandering off. If there's a, you know, a, you one know, of the endorsement plans that they have a path, then we would allow that. One, one of the drawbacks, you know, is the, the, the kid that wants to become the welder, okay, yeah. couldn't get it done with the four by four, all the requirements. Mm -hmm. Well, even in this 26 credit requirement with your electives, you could get it done. Now, you'd have to make some choices, right? Yes, sir. Just like you can't play football, baseball, basketball, you know, sometimes in, in choir and band and all those things, usually you have to make some choices in high school. Correct. So they would have to make some choices, but they could get it done and still be on the recommend. That's what goes back to this. what CJ was saying is, is about uh, um, the ability to do both. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. And we want to make sure that the campuses have that flexibility to meet the needs of all those students, whatever their path may be. Um, and finally, you see on our recommended plan is the four by four, continues the algebra two as an expectation. Um, and we would expect, you know, 85% plus of our students to complete this plan at 26 total credits. So here's the picture of the current CISD recommended plan. Percentages there. And they don't all, yeah, there's. That's part of the problem. 10% of our, of our total graduates right now uh, would be on this. We expect that number to go up maybe a little bit based upon what Mr. Husband's Emma Haynes said. Yeah. We think there could be a few extra points there. Um, currently, we're at 89% on our recommended plan, but we expect it to drop down a few points. I think that's realistic. And the intent of the, of the legislation is to give a little more flexibility. So we understand that that will be the case. So when you look at the the current recommended plan and the proposed recommended plan, the only real difference you'll see is the half credit of speech is no longer a requirement for the state. Um, we propose that we would 
remove that as a required course. It would still be an option uh, as an elective, and students would have five and a half credits of electives uh, beyond uh, what is expected in our recommended plan. Yeah. They don't, they don't, they don't talk anymore. <laughs> okay. And this is just the course sequence that we would that, that we would expect uh, our students to follow, which is a similar path to what we currently have: English one through four, mathematics. We keep algebra two as a, as the default expectation. Uh, science. We keep biology, chemistry, physics. We do feel those are important. Social studies. One change to note would be that uh, we would allow our freshman students the option to substitute AP Human Geography for their World Geography course, uh, with your approval. Mm -hmm. Dr. No, I'm sorry. Yes. What would be the approved fourth year math course and the approved fourth year science course? There is a long list. Oh, is options. okay. Sorry. Yes. So there's <laughs> one, there's, there's lots of yes. options. They have many options. That, that's where Which I was is headed. Are we going to have one or two? Well, there's or, like six courses that have algebra two as a prerequisite, right? Right. Or even more, maybe. Yes, sir. That's more advanced, the fourth year. And there's several within the career and technology area that could be industrial-based or related that would fulfill those requirements. Prepare them for oh, okay. yes. All right. Thank you. That's interesting. So to, to sort of summarize where we are, if, if you look at our recommended plan, our focus is post-secondary preparation, be it workforce, college, whatever it may be. If they follow, if a student follows the recommended plan, as we just saw on the last slide, just based on that recommended plan, they would meet the criteria for arts and humanities endorsement and the multidisciplinary endorsement, and they would have flexibility to get other endorsements with those five and a half credits of electives. And by following the recommended plan, they will earn distinguished achievement. So the, the, our recommended plan is two endorsements and and distinguished achievement, plus five and a half electives to take the pathway whichever they choose to go. So, and as I said before, I'm excited to tell you that, that all of our high schools are prepared to, to offer this curriculum to our students. They've done great work. Uh, we will continue to prepare all of our students for post-secondary success. Uh, at the same time, we will allow our campus professionals the discretion to make decisions uh, that they feel are best, <coughs> along with the family and the students, for each individual child. Can we go back to this, yes. this the, the, the page where the STEM and the, uh, you know, the, the five different yes, uh, yes. endorsements were? Okay, now, you're saying that all five high schools are prepared to offer all five of these endorsements? Yes, sir. Maybe not. But not all of the sub, uh, uh, you know, in other words. Sure. Somebody might have law enforcement and somebody else might have welding. Or yes, sir. I don't know. But it will okay. be open they can to get. all students within the district. If I'm located at one school and I want to go for welding or I want to go for law enforcement or I want to go for whatever, all <coughs> students in the district are eligible to participate. Each campus offers its own, offers its own kind of, of course, so not necessarily, <coughs> this is the answer I would tell you there is that there would be some programs that are offered on certain campuses that aren't offered on others. So how is that fair to students that might not be at a campus that offers these and that, that school has no, does not have an offering that fits the true needs of that child? What are we going to do about that child? It, it's, uh, it, well, I mean, I would, I would just say it's impractical to have, because you have different preferences, uh, auto mechanics here and meat uh, processing at, at Candy Creek, and it, it's kind of like Japanese and Chinese. It, uh, you know, you couldn't fill those classes at the other schools, right. but the Woodlands High School ha has enough to make those classes. And so but the answer to the, that's exactly right. Each of our schools represent different students with different interests and in, in, in different things that come out, as well as at different facilities. They're not all the same facilities. But that the answer to the question short of it is we would have to be running buses every which way every direction all day if we wanted to move students to where a specific program exists just because we didn't have it at that school. Currently, course of studies are based on what are students interested in and we try to give it to them. And obviously one of the advantages that we have with our large high schools is that we, we offer a very large catalog of courses. 
Uh, and we, at the same time, we also provide some uh, opportunity to take advantage of, for example, we bring cosmetology to two locations. We also will transport students to access automotive technology. But to answer your question, no, if one school has French and another school has French, I'm not, we, I'm don't, not saying, we don't I'm do that. I'm more of the te your but, but aren't the learned, some of the tech uh, programs also know, like, like the welding and the phlebotomy and those those things, are, are they offered through the college or something? No, aren't we, they, aren't they, the are, H, don't they cross multi-campuses? We, we do. Or the HVAC or the automotive or, you know, if you have somebody in Oak Ridge or Woodlands or whatever the ones the automotive or we do the major the major the major ones that we house at our at our district uh, vocational programming will bring students from all over the so district. that that was my question yes. I want to make sure the, under these these endorsements that if I'm a student that you know that's not on my campus I have the ability and my counselors are going to help me get to wherever I need to get that certification. The major programs, yes. They're, we're always going to have some courses that I'm not I'm not talking certifications about that, don't that match course, up or course level like French or Chinese or whatever. I'm talking about more of the career and the technology areas. Yes. Yes okay. Okay. Just we, make sure. If you want if, if but 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 to be honest about that, I mean let's just make sure that we're not misleading anybody here. <laughs> If you want to do, if you want to do meat processing, you go to the Woodlands. That's not a case. You cannot go. You're not going to be transported anyway. No, right. It, to from the Woodlands to Candy Creek, right? Right. Any more so than you're going to be brought to cosmetology from? Or, uh, I don't know. There's some of them you do. And some well, you do transport. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's so not all of them, all right? Cosmetology. We right. do. We have, we transport for cosmetology. We have two locations. One's at Oak Ridge and one's at Conroe High School. But like your HVAC, your um, culinary arts programs only. Culinary, culinary arts, arts right. the, the, the major CT programs, yes, ma'am. We, we and that's oh, that's what I'm focusing okay. on. Okay. The major CT right. programs that so when that Needs student that. graduates high school, they are career ready or they're almost career ready to get sit for their licensing or their certification. And I would also guess as as we get into this, the uh, need for more. Um, Courses on different campuses will will start to emerge, and we'll add some. And that is part of the process that our campuses are currently going through as they are building their sequences. They are identifying areas in which they want to offer more to, to open up more pathways. That's one of the greatest mismatches industries, and I know Dr. Stockton has visited with them. But um, at the recent economic outlooks um, that the area chamber of commerce did, the gentleman from Chevron Phillips. Mm -hmm talked about the, those specific career technology certifications and opportunities and that they would be hiring over 12,000 people in the next three years and they cannot find enough of those um, people that are certified and that the schools are not matching those needs. And that, that's, you know, U.S. based and you'll find articles in the Wall Street Journal that say the same thing. Because not all children are going to go to college, but they need to have these kind of certifications. And that's why I'm kind of trying to hone in that we're going to allow all students for the major endorsements. And, and we also have the, the luxury here of having such a great relationship with the, with the fantastic college system in our area. And we continue to offer more okay. uh, dual credit courses, which all of our high schools have access to. Okay. I mean, you all have done years. a great job on getting ready. Well, and that's exactly why why. H House Bill 5 came into right. existence for that very reason. and, and uh, But I do think, again, anytime we have a, a shift like this in graduation plans, there's a certification shift that has to occur, too, because sure. kids are going to sign up for different courses. So that's going right. to change. And I mean, time. it's going to be some changes, and I understand that. And then the second thing, and I, I stated it earlier, I, I do believe as a society, but also as a district, we have to give equal value to those careers. Because we get, give, and I'm very proud of our district and our students that attend college and that are college ready. Very, very proud of that. But there's a lot of kiddos out there that can be certified to have very meaningful careers that are of equal value for what they're trying to achieve. And I think we have to give that equal value and appreciation for those careers. That's very good. Thank Dr. you, Dr. No. Dr. No. Dr. Brown, go ahead. Yes. yes. Uh, we keep talking about the five high schools. What about Hawk? Hawk is, uh, we have, a, the, the students can follow our recommended plan at Hawk. They will also, they have the ability to graduate as distinguished uh, at Hawk. 
They can, they can gain endorsements in uh, multidisciplinary and arts and humanities. They may not have all five endorsements through Hawk, just based on its size and the, and the special nature of the school. Okay. But well, they thanks. will have the ability to gain endorsements. They will have the ability to be distinguished and gain performance acknowledgements, which will set right them up for success. 10%. Yes, sir. That's the distinction. Yes, sir. I have a question. We, we keep saying you can do both. Okay, so I, I want to graduate certified in Mr. Ship's welding program or HVAC, either one. How many course courses does that take, and do I have room in the distinguished plan to do it? I mean, I know that's why they did this, but is there enough to do both? I mean, is it more than the five electives that you have? You, you see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Mr. Ship's nodding yes. Yes, four courses. Four. Absolutely. Four. There's room within our within the okay. plans that are. So, so you'd have to make some choices, but yes. you could do it. Yes, sir. Okay. So it is possible. Yes. Thank you, Dr. No. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Ship. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Awesome. Good job. Thank you. Yes, good job. Very good. And God bless you all trying to keep all that together. It's, hard it's, hard uh, it's like a mini college going on. Yeah. It's like a major college. Yeah. <laughs> all right. This is a professional staff. Isn't it professional? I know. They're just doing business. Okay. Who's up next? Item 5A is GMP Runyon Exhaust <coughs> and Mitchell and Burns <coughs> Freezer Cooler Replacement. <laughs> Dr. Stock. Hey, Easy Foster, if you'll present that item. Thank you. We want it easy for you, sir. <laughs> Easy does President Sanders, Dr. Stock, members of the board, it is my pleasure to bring you a much simpler <coughs> and easier to explain item for your approval tonight. <laughs> sure, but we need a new freezer and cooler. <coughs> well, we need a couple of them, but it's my pleasure to bring forward a guaranteed maximum price proposal to replace amazing equipment at Runyon Elementary, which is an exhaust hood at Mitchell Intermediate and the Woodlands High School, which are freezer coolers. As I said, these, this equipment is aging. Uh, we took a uh, we advertised for this project twice in the Houston Chronicle and Conroe Courier for competitive seal proposals. Notices were also posted in the Association for General Contractors offices, the FW Dodge Plan Rooms, and the South Montgomery County Woodlands Chamber of Commerce. We selected Diamond Electric as a CM for this project, and they accepted proposals in my presence and the presence of our design engineer, DBR. We verified all the prices and, prices and specs for the project. The cost of the project totals $321,564.47, funds to be provided by the Child Nutrition Department. As I said before, this is a life cycle replacement item uh, where planning, construction, and child nutrition are working together. And at this time, we ask for so approval. Second, I do have one question. This is not going to, because we discussed the Child Nutrition Department. That's been one of my sticking points. This is not going to adversely affect their ability to provide the quality of food that they're providing. This, our, our last comment was that they had all the equipment that they needed and we weren't going to be having issues with purchasing new equipment. So, Well, this is this is a normal life cycle replacement and that's accounted for in their department. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other questions or comments? All in favor? And all opposed? All right. Motion carries. <laughs> and item 5B is bond referendum update. Mr. Foster, please. So, yes. Again, it's my pleasure to bring for you an update on the projects, the major projects currently underway, funded with the 2008 bond referendum. Uh, starting with Charlie L. Patterson Elementary School. This school is scheduled to open uh, for school next fall, so in August of 2014. It is approximately 93% complete. We're nearing that point where the percents each month get smaller and smaller. Uh, but we are scheduled to take possession of this school at the end of March. Uh, right. This school, uh, you'll see it's, it's a little further and when you compare uh, Patterson to Stewart. This school is actually further in the exterior. Uh, Stewart's going to be further on the interior. Uh, that reason here is that we've been, had some address issues with the uh, local municipality giving gas service to this building to control the humidity. So the finished materials are in the school. They're just not necessarily installed because they won't stick to the floor or stay in the ceiling yet. As you can see, the, the paint colors are coming together. Casework is installed, uh, and we are moving forward well. At Jean E. Stewart Elementary School, again, this, this project is likewise about 92, 93% complete. 
as I stated before, it's a little bit further on the inside of the building than it is uh, than Patterson is. Uh, but on the outside, there's still some details to uh, to wrap up. The uh, local developer has just finished their roadways and other approvals around us, uh, so we can make our connections, driveways, and finish our landscaping or the the rough grading that allows to do landscaping at the site. Interior of the building, you see the finishes are in place. Uh, this building is fully connected to utilities, uh, so you see the carpets down, uh, glasses going in the windows, paint on the walls, gym floors in, things of that nature. This school is likewise, uh, as, as with Patterson, scheduled to open in August of 2014, and we will take possession of that school at the end of next month. At Knox Junior High, uh, this, uh, this project is, you'll notice it's the very same picture you saw last week. <laughs> <laughs> that band just really doesn't look good. I thought you tried. Well, that's not a harm that part. <laughs> <laughs> but Knox is going as scheduled. Uh, we, our wheel we had our uh, uh, MEP walkthrough for the second pod of the classrooms with maintenance department and our contractors. That has gone well. We turned that second pod over to the teachers uh, this coming weekend. Work begins on the third pod of classrooms in earnest next week. Uh, just as, as we had, had planned. In addition to Knox, this project also touches several other campuses uh, leading up and before we have our next board meeting, we'll have uh, work starting in the evenings and night for uh, McCullough Junior High where we're finishing their uh, air conditioning upgrades. We're upgrading the lighting and uh, Bach Auditorium this summer. But the, uh, the prep work is happening in the off hours uh, as, we, uh, as we speak. Uh, also at the Woodlands High School ninth grade where we're doing a controls upgrade and relocating some equipment within the building. That work has started in earnest at night uh, also as we speak. Those jobs, uh, as we approach spring break, uh, we have a, a lot more planned for the spring break time period. Uh, and I'll bring that update to you at the next board meeting. But this job is proceeding as planned and is on schedule. That is our update. Thank you, Easy. Appreciate you, man. You took Mr. Oster, one question. Um, yes, you know, on the concrete, not as much concrete being on the ground at 16 as there is in 14. Yes. Okay. Um, is that in the guaranteed maximum price? Is that at the risk of the contractor, or is that at our risk? In other words, I, let, let me explain. Maybe I, I didn't. I didn't say what I meant. If the cost of concrete goes up by a third, is that on Fritz or, or uh, Duratech or whoever, or is that on us? Uh, that particular issue is one that we're facing currently, and that is precisely why we, we budget these projects with contractors' contingency in mind. Uh, at, at this particular instance, the contractor is not at risk for it. The developer around us uh, changed their plan. So we did have two driveways on the new Wood Forest Parkway. They changed their plan and gave us a roadway on the north side of our campus, which changed our, our alignment for transportation and, and in egress for vehicle traffic in and out. So we, we, the district, put our contractor on hold for the last sections of parking lot and driveways so that we wouldn't be tearing work out to put new work in. So the risk is small uh, relative to the scope of work remaining to be done. But we, we but what you're saying is it is on us because we put them on hold. It's on yes, yes sir. and, and we're, we're actually currently analyzing the uh, the degree of escalation of the price of concrete because it has gone up, not by a third, but it has gone up considerably since we started that project almost 14 months ago. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. All right. Item six: business finance financial reports. Uh, Mr. Rice, would you? Present that item, please. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. I'm here tonight to present the financial statements for the district uh, for the month of January. Uh, these statements will include our general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the first statement we're going to look at is our balance sheet. It includes our assets, liabilities, and fund balances for the district. I always like to look at uh, one item I, I want to share with y'all is our property tax collections. Uh, they've come in uh, very well, 86.76% uh, this year compared to 84.87. Now, last year was good. This year is even better, so I feel really confident that we're going to reach that 100% milestone that we normally do. Very good. Uh, the next statement is the uh, income statement for the same funds. It shows our revenues and expenditures. 
Looking at our revenues at our local level, as you can see, property taxes are our number one revenue generator for our general fund and debt service fund. Uh, food sales for child nutrition, and then uh, premium contributions for our self-funded insurance. Uh, general fund balance, uh, feel pretty confident that we're going to have a, a nice little bump in there, uh, almost $5 million. Uh, debt service fund uh, projected to decrease about $4.2 million. Uh, child nutrition fund balance, uh, no change from our projection from uh, last month. Uh, good news to uh, report with self-funded insurance. Uh, uh, for the year to date, we've had total revenues of $13.7 million, total expenses of $13.3 million. So uh, revenues over expenses, I like to say that over instead of under, mm -hmm. of uh, 354000 so far this year. So uh, been pretty much coming. Been, uh, been going pretty well. Uh, now our participation at our wellness centers, uh, we have two centers, one in Oak Ridge and Conroe. Uh, for the year, Oak Ridge has had 2,680 participants, uh, Conroe 402, and uh, averaging at Oak Ridge about 536, and Conroe about 80 per month. Our bond transition plan, uh, we've currently expended and encumbered $23.2 million of our $104 million transition plan, uh, leaving us with an estimate to complete of about $81 million uh, with a contingency of $4 million. Our investments for the month, at the end of December, we had $280 million invested. At the end of January, $375 million. You don't see those taxes rolling in and increasing that. Uh, weighted average maturity, 57 days, that's still in the pools. We also are invested in the Capital One, uh, which is at 25 basis points. Uh, we have uh, just completed with U.S. Bank our third-party agreement uh, with Woodforce, so we will uh, start doing that ladder that we discussed, so we will be setting that up uh, in the next few weeks. Yield the maturity of our portfolio, 0.1536, and the 90-day T-bill, which is our benchmark. Okay. Good job. Thank you, Mr. Great job. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Right, Mr. Cox. Any questions or comments? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Item 7 is executive session. A closed session of the board will now be held on the matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by Section 551.071, 551.072, and 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be at either A, this public meeting upon the reconvening of this public meeting, or B, at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof, as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. The time is 7.17. PM. What time is it? And I need a, I need a, a first and a second. I, I got it first. Okay. You got a second. Yes. And second. I got a quorum, right? Yes. Yeah. You don't mind leaving, D. Mel? Uh, yes. Uh, CJ, well, CJ's both been counting more anyway. <laughs>